Hi guys, welcome to Deliver Studios. We'll be looking at integrating the YouTube Android player into an Android application. And I will be integrating this into an already made uh, source code which I have written in my video called the consuming video of streaming download links uh, from the ALOC search engine. Uh, this video actually call on an external YouTube application to play the searched YouTube videos. Now we're going to embed and include uh, the YouTube player into this application. So you won't have to call an external YouTube application to play the video. I'll be added straight to Android Studio and uh, I have the source code and I'll be showing you on how to implement the YouTube uh, video player into an Android application. Uh, before you proceed, you need an API key, which is your developer API key, where you can get that from the Google Developer Console. Uh, I have it right there. There's the dashboard where we have the APIs and services. Uh, you have the library and the credentials. Uh, from the credentials, you get to create uh, your API key. You can create the OAuth or the server API key where you actually uh, select if you need uh, probably you need to uh, call an Android application or you need to create for iOS application uh, so you have that uh, setup right there in the library you need to select uh, this particular library which is uh, the YouTube data API version 3 very important uh, this YouTube uh, API uh, provides access to YouTube data such as video playlist and so on so once you actually enable this uh, library, you're ready to go. So you copy your API key uh, from the Google Developer Console, save it somewhere, uh, you'll be using it in the course of interacting with uh, the YouTube player. So after said and done, after completing this step with uh, right there in the Google APIs, you can head straight down to Android Studio to actually uh, complete the integration. Uh, majorly, we have uh, the video stream URL, which you can see right there in the main activity, uh, which actually calls on the bunch of JSON file, uh, which was consumed uh, to a list view, and uh, it was actually displayed. And the on-click of this list, of each list item, which is down to uh, probably called the YouTube video uh, player or called uh, the browser to actually help to uh, display the video but now we're going to be integrating the YouTube video player so we'll have that set up rather than the build gradle very important you need to include the YouTube Android player API there's a jar file which you have to uh, include in the dependencies manually uh, this just how to include a manual uh, jar file you have actually need to copy the jar file which is right there like uh, is a file. It's like a zip file, and you actually need to place it down in the root, uh, the app di directory of your application. Right then, the libs folder. Very important. You can see it right there. In the libs folder, you copy it or paste it right there. Uh, we have it, the YouTube Android Player API. After you have that, uh, you still need to include a line in the dependencies, the compile files. You compile the file. You point down to where the file sits. It's sitting right there in the libs, the YouTube. Android player api.jar you have to specify it this way after you have that set up you sync gradle and you're ready to use uh, the methods right there in this particular jar file cool let's look at the layout uh, the layout is going to actually change a little bit we are adding the uh, the video player as uh, a different layout which would actually wrap around the relative layout and if you can see it, and uh, you have the YouTube player view. Uh, this is actually called it the com.google Android, the, the YouTube player. It's actually calling from the Java you've actually included in the dependency. So this is very important. That's the view itself, the YouTube view. And uh, you can actually have some other things underneath. It's not going to take all the screen. It will only take the full screen when you are actually uh, toggling to the full, full screen uh, for view. So it's actually going to take uh, its appropriate uh, portion. That's why you have the layout with as match parents to feed the the, the parents. 
and the height should just wrap the content displaying cool and underneath uh, you're going to actually have the video name you can have some other metadata of your video at this point in time you can have the video name you can have the description you can have some other metadata extracted from the intent cool We have uh, the video items, we have that set up, we have the settings set up already. I will employ you to look at this video uh, that actually created this. If you've not uh, done that, uh, you can actually click the link and uh, you get uh, yourself acclimatized with how the structure is. So we only included the video player to actually display the video instead of pushing it down to an external application to handle. Heading straight to the Java classes. You have to include the video player and the YouTube failure recovery activity. This is actually going to recover any failure uh, in the player. So it's actually going to do that out of the box. We we'll first of all start from the YouTube failure recovery activity, uh, which extends the YouTube based activity and implements the uninitialized listener of the YouTube player. Cool. And uh, you have to variety of methods the uninitialization failure and the on activity results so you are actually going to get the result from the failure callback which you actually pass the provider and the reason the error that uh, triggers so you check for the error and uh, you get the dialogue to show what actually caused the error and uh, if not uh, there was an error initializing the YouTube player so this is actually going to handle the error uh, message once there is a problem probably a broken link or something happened or an internet connection connectivity disappears so that's going to actually undo that and you have the on activity for result to actually initialize if user performed a recovery action probably you click on retry and uh, this is where you need to lock in your API key very important we'll get to look at how we included that in the YouTube player as a constant which could be called in any uh, where rather than the code so you have the API key to initialize and with this activity Looking at the video player, the video player definitely extends the YouTube failure recovery activity. So uh, it's actually relied on that for the callback, for the er from the error callbacks, and uh, you have that setup. And uh, you have to set up the intent that you'll be expecting from the main activity. Let's get to look at the main activity one more time, uh, which is actually pushing on click of the items that we're gotten from the airlock server that's from the search you actually made which is actually going to be a bunch of youtube videos and uh you have that right there if you should notice uh on set on item click listener on the adapter view of the list item you have to write on item click uh which will actually get uh the position and the adapter view and this can actually uh, pass an intent down to not the activity it has all the parameters needed it has the adapter view it has the view and the position so you have that uh, set up and uh, you can also pass the uh, if you notice we are gonna pass the host URL which is the current stream uh, in question so for you to actually uh, extract the query parameter uh, you need to extract the query parameter from the URL uh, so we're gonna do that right now so firstly uh, you you convert this to a URI and uh, after converting to the URI uh, you have it set up as a URI and you call on the get query parameter at the point of the V so this will be passed to the string so at this point in time you have that set up and uh, you could trigger an intent to the v video player class where you need to put the extras which you needed Firstly, you can put the title of the video and as well you put the string which is going to be the video ID, the YouTube video ID uh, because you only need the video ID right there in the video player. You don't need a bunch of the URL. That's why we extracted uh, the query parameter there right there. So you start the activity for, you start the intent and it's been triggered. So right there in the video player, we're expecting two parameters. Uh, we're expecting the video title and the video ID which were called as the key in the main activity uh, you have that setup and uh, if you notice in the main activity as well we declared 
the API key, right there. You need to lock in your API key here. I actually made that empty because my API key is unique to only mine. So you have to generate yours and paste that right there into that uh, portion. So once you have that set up, you're good to go. Uh, in the video player, you initialize uh, the set the content view of the video player, which we have. And uh, now you get the intent, also the extras. What extras are we expecting here? Two extras, the title and the video ID, which we've already created the key constants that were called in the main activity. So you have to actually get the intent and get uh, the appropriate data type. If it's string, definitely it, it, it's string. So you pass that to a string variable, which will be used. And uh, if you notice, uh, you have to initialize the video tie to. Uh, you can use a uh, button knife, or you can just do it typically like this. You find view by ID, so you get the the idea of the text view, which is uh, the tie to, and you set the tie to, uh, set the text to the value of the string. So you have that set up. Now let's get to look at the way we're going to initialize the view, which is the YouTube player view. You call that the YouTube player view, and you also initialize by pointing at its ID, which is, which is the YouTube view. Uh, you have an object called the YouTube view, which you now initialize with the API key. You have to first of all initialize with the API key. Your API key will be gotten from the Google Developer Console. Uh, so you have that set up with the second parameter, which is this activity. Cool. You'll be overriding once you extend the YouTube failure recovery you'll be overriding on initialization sources. So this takes the provider, the YouTube player, and the boolean, was it restored or not? So once you have that uh, set up, uh, you could test if uh, the if was restored, or this is if was restored, because this is a not, so if it was restored, it's actually going to queue the video passing the video ID. This is where we actually needed the video ID. So with that, uh, you call in the player, which is the YouTube player, to actually add this to queue and uh, get this initialized, get this to play. So you've actually called the video ID down to the player. So with this uh, if statement, uh, it's actually going to display the video in question, which is the YouTube video on the YouTube player. So the get YouTube player provider, uh, this is actually uh, getting the uh, the view itself, which is the YouTube view. So you're just returning uh, a copy or let's say an instance of the YouTube player view. So with uh, the get YouTube player provider, this is just simple. Uh, we all have different uh, from that. You could use the YouTube player. Uh, you could have the video wall. You could have the simple player view. Uh, this is a simple player view. You could have the player fragment, uh, the custom player controls, uh, where you have to you, you could control uh, the uh, the the different flow of the video, probably the pause, the the rewind, uh, the fast forward, and even the volumes. Uh, there is another one called the full screen handling, where you get to uh, have a full screen uh, of the video on start. So there are different forms that you could actually use the YouTube player library and uh, which the out of the box for you to use up. This is just a simple player view, just like the normal YouTube player view you used to know in the YouTube application. So cool, once you have that set up, you're good to go. You've actually integrated your YouTube player into your Android application. But this listen to a video ID, which is a YouTube video ID, not just any video ID. So it listens to only the YouTube video ID for you to actually display that correctly on the YouTube player. It, quick dive into the manifest uh, definitely you need your internet permission uh, the access network player as well state rather and you need to lock in the activity that we've just included which is the video player uh, very important and you could set the screen orientation to no sensor uh, so it can actually it will actually uh, undo the orientation by itself because sometimes you might need a larger screen probably you want a full screen so you can also get that uh, done when you want to click the full screen right there in the video player and uh, for backward compatibility with other uh, forms of uh, API that's uh, back uh, previous 800 API so you need to actually add that to the name that's where the back button will actually direct to 
which is the parent activity the main activity is the parent activity so on back click is actually go back to the list view for you to pick another video to display in the youtube video player so with all said and done with these few uh steps you should be able to integrate the youtube uh video player into your android application embed it into it and i'll get that working out of the box from android thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout uh, this video i'll be showing the screencast of this uh application so you can see how it's been displayed one more time don't forget to subscribe to my channel have a lovely time bye bye